So welcome everybody to the fourth uh, webinar of Linea Pelle in uh, Sustainability Talks. And uh, today we are gonna uh, talk about something very, very specific, more specific than the other uh, episode. There will be chemical management and the safety of uh, product. Some housekeeping rules, we are gonna, we have our panelists that are gonna present uh, some presentation on, on chemical management from Unich and our special guest. And in the meantime, you can put your question in the question and answer uh, section. We will uh, select the most interesting question and uh, submit to, to our uh, panelists. We hope we can do all the questions, we can reply all the questions. If we don't manage to do that, uh, we will reply in the chat or we will send you an answer later on. There may be some delay because we want to make sure that the answer you get is a good one. And uh, I think Unich is very professional on this uh, side that was just mentioning before. For the ones, uh, so this event is moderated by us, NNN, Sustainable Talks with NNN. So we are two old friends, we know each other since 15 years uh, and we are passionate about leather uh, sustainability and materials uh, in general in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. And in our spare time, uh, we want to create a community uh, to make awareness in the fashion supply chain, especially to avoid greenwash. So if you are also passionate about sustainability, join us in uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn as a Sustainable Talks with NNN. But uh, let's go to the topic of today and to present and introduce our guest. So first, uh, we have Elisabetta Scaglia, a biologist. Hi, Elisabetta. So uh, Elisabetta is- Hi, Nicolò. <clears throat> Elisabetta is an expert on environmental and sustainability issues related to leather uh, production. And uh, uh, specifically, she knows very well chemical legislation working together with the rich standard to make sure that the leather industry is uh, accomplished compliant to, to this and uh, she lead the auditor for uh, EN ISO 1401 and she is the chairman of uh, UNI Italian standard body and uh, also she's involved in leather sustainability promotion and implementation in cooperation with the major international luxury brand. Then we have uh, Nico. Hi everyone. And uh, good morning everyone. I'm here to, to moderate uh, with my friend Nicolo today, the sustainability talks. And I would like to introduce you guys Professor Mazi, and Mazi, hi. hi, hi, Professor. Mazi is uh, a professor in uh, chemical engineer at the Milan University. I'd like you the word to introduce yourself, Professor. Okay, no, no, I'm a chemical engineer in Polytechnic di Milano. Uh, actually, I'm professor in applied physical chemistry. And uh, so I'm a process developer. So I will enter in contact with the, uh, the reality of leather tanning of the process in order to have the possibility to have a really, uh, to, to, to see which are the, the alternatives to the technology and how the different alternatives to the today technology are really sustainable or not. Great. And the last uh, panelist is the, for the third time with us, Fabiana Orlandi <laughs> from uh, Unich. Now we know her very, very well. Ciao, Fabiana. Ciao, Nicolò. Hello, Thank everybody. Nice to be here again. Yeah, and she is just to highlight again, she is the one that is behind the sustainability report of UNICH or the yearly report. So she is the one that tells us every year what has been done in the leather industry uh, in terms of sustainability. So very important role. And, uh, and, uh, and then Nikon, I think we, we can start. We can start with our questions and, and uh, thanks. Yeah, the, the first question we always ask to our, 
to our person and guest, it's, uh, I would like to ask to Professor Mazi, can you give us your idea of sustainability, Professor? Hey, sustainability is something that uh, everyone claims to have, but uh, uh, if uh, it is today a very quantitative concept, so it's not only qualitative. And also it takes part to have a very complex view of the system from really uh, to the entire life uh, of a product. So we start from the CRUD to the CAD, really. It's really uh, what we had to consider to be a sustainable product. So not only during the production, but also during the use and on the end of life. And you have to consider many aspects. Uh, usually in energy, we are looking too much to the carbon impact. And in many cases, when we uh, want to have uh, a product that is uh, uh, replacing, uh, for example, hydrocarbon or a polymer, we are using something that has an enormous impact in terms of use of land and in the use of water. So uh, it's very difficult to see which is the real product uh, that is uh, uh, sustainable more than another. So uh, we really need today to address in a full complex way all the aspects uh, to assess the sustainability of the product. If you let me to have uh, a, an introduction that is a little bit funny, if you compare uh, the story of the leather uh, tanning through chromium. It is the story of a wonderful product for the customer. So something that is uh, really uh, of high quality and it's lasting for a lot of time. And uh, today we had the problem that people want to replace. And they say that the, the use of chromium uh, is uh, something that is unsafe. Why it is unsafe? Is it something like uh, in the detective book stories when you start uh, to have uh, uh, the rules to, to, to write a nice book, you, you, you need to have the murder, you need to have uh, some hide uh, that uh, make uh, let us say, impossible at the beginning to discover which is the guilty and which is not. And uh, then you have something to clarify. And the story of chromium is exactly in that. Uh, in the, in the, it, it, fix, uh, it, it fit in that, in that framework. I can start considering at the beginning chromium as the guilty. And then I discover that probably the real guilty is another chemical that is more dangerous. And then the beginning was considered simply uh, not uh, there. He had a, 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 a good, let's say, uh, alibi. Yeah. <laughs> so this, it's, is a, <laughs> this is a great introduction. Uh, <laughs> and give us a clear guideline how is going to be the tone of the conversation uh, yes. today. Very, very uh, interesting introduction. Mm -hmm. So guys, bear with us because uh, uh, Professor Maurizio Masi will uh, really highlight some key point on the sustainability aspect from the chemical point of view, but we can start with Elisabetta and uh, with their presentation yeah. on, the, on the chemical management, Elisabetta. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. <coughs> Good afternoon to everybody. I'm very happy to, to be here. And uh, um, I would like to start with some uh, philosophical aspects of, uh, of chemistry. Um, what we often don't realize is that everything is chemical. Everything uh, is, is surrounding us <coughs> is chemical, is made of chemical elements starting from air, we, we breathe air, uh, the, the air composition is made mainly nitrogen, then oxygen, um, carbon dioxide and uh, uh, other gases. The, the smallest part of, uh, of the chemistry is, uh, is an atom. 
uh, when at least two atoms are combined, uh, they're called mol molecules. And uh, we can have small molecules and very big molecules, like the, the one that is in, in the right uh, of the in the right part uh, of the of the slide, that, that is uh, an organic <coughs> Um, an organic molecule that is used to uh, in uh, in cancer disease to um, cure um, cancer. And uh, what is important to understand is that uh, uh, it doesn't exist any bad or good chemical substance. It depends. The following, please, because. Uh, what is important is how much of this substance we, we use or we are in, in contact with. Paracelso, in the middle of the uh, uh, 15th, um, 15th the second of the record, the century, uh, said that all things are poison and nothing is without poison. The dosage alone makes it so a thing is not a poison. Just an example. Uh, if you drink uh, um, a glass of wine, a good wine, you drink a small, also a small part of alcohol. If you drink uh, a liter of pure alcohol, you possibly die. And, uh, uh, and, and this is what we need to take into account during this presentation because uh, is the amount that makes the substance dangerous or not. If uh, we, we need, we, we will talk also about chromium and uh, uh, we, we need to survive a small amount of chromium micrograms per day. But if we don't have enough, enough chromium, chromium-3, our uh, metabolism of sugar possibly is not going very well. Uh, we can we could have uh, uh, health consequences that, that are very, um, very problematic. The next one, please. And uh, at the same time, very uh, useful molecules like oxygen, particularly in, uh, in this period where oxygen is fundamental to, um, to take care of, uh, of COVID, uh, uh, persons who are affected by, by COVID. And uh, um, at the same time, uh, uh, oxygen can damage such, uh, that is considered very strong, that is iron. And uh, uh, if some, if, if uh, structures that are made uh, with uh, iron, such as reinforced concrete, if they are not uh, very well um, maintained, uh, they, they can they can fall down. So from from, from one side, oxygen is essential for our life because we breathe uh, oxygen. And without oxygen, we can't survive. On the other on the other hand, uh, we need to be sure that we manage certain um, certain structures that can be damaged there damaged by, uh, by the same oxygen we need to survive. And then I leave the floor to my, my friend Fabiana. Thank you so much. Uh, again, uh, hello to everybody. Um, now we can uh, um, come into deep uh, on the uh, chemical uh, management. Uh, that is an important uh, um, topic uh, to, uh, to guarantee uh, uh, the final products to consumers, uh, uh, the product uh, uh, safety. So what is, uh, uh, first of all, what is uh, a management system? A management system is uh, uh, the set of policies, processes, and procedures that a company uses to achieve its uh, uh, business objectives. Uh, probably you have in your company, uh, a quality system, management system, or an environmental uh, management management uh, system. What is so? What is the um, the peculiarity of uh, a chemical management system? 
um, this system is uh, uh, the way uh, with which uh, a company effectively controls uh, incoming chemicals, also across uh, chemical uh, inventory, and also control chemical processes, uh, um, storages, uh, uses, uh, and also handle of uh, chemicals, chemical wastes, uh, in order to uh, manage these, uh, uh, the, the risk uh, related to, uh, to chemicals and also to protect uh, workers from uh, uh, worker related uh, injuries, uh, illness, uh, and also to control and reduce uh, um, environmental impact and optimize uh, product uh, safety. Oh. Fabio, non ti sentiamo. Fabiana, Fabiana, penso che sei in mute. You are on mute. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for the mute uh, um, before. So, an important uh, aspect uh, related uh, to chemical management that is also uh, the base uh, on which uh, a good management system is, uh, uh, is based is uh, uh, risk assessment. What is a risk assessment? A risk assessment is uh, the evaluation, is a sort of tool uh, thanks of, we, of which we can understand the hazards uh, associated with the chemicals we are using in, uh, in the channels, but uh, in uh, every facilities we are uh, considering. Also, risk assessment help us to map where we are using chemicals uh, plants, uh, uh, processes, the storages. And also we can uh, identify risks of each chemical that uh, we are using. Um, also that is uh, considering uh, uh, from purchase uh, phase to end uses. Um, also risk assessment can give us uh, um, elements to uh, provide uh, measures to guarantee the employees' uh, uh, employees' uh, safety, and also and also to ensure alignment with the relation own RSL and if any, if uh, uh, there are clients RSL, and also last but not least, a uh, uh, risk uh, uh, a good risk assessment can permit us to uh, determine chemical disposal and also correct. Uh, disposals and arrangements to avoid environmental impact. But uh, uh, when, we, uh, when we talk about uh, risk assessment, it's very important to, uh, to fix, uh, to put our attention on uh, a very important concept uh, that is uh, risk. What is risk? Uh, frequently, we, uh, we make confusion between risk and hazard. Uh, frequently, we use uh, the both, uh, both terms uh, um, as the same, but uh, uh, they are not uh, synonyms. They are two different concepts. So, what is uh, hazard? Hazard is uh, an intrinsic property or quality of a certain substance uh, if we talk about uh, um, chemicals with the potential to cause damage. So it's a sort of uh, uh, characteristic, a known characteristic, a char characteristic of, uh, uh, of a chemical. But hazard is different from risk. What is risk? What, what in standard risk is? Risk is a probability. The concept of risk is uh, uh, linked to the exposure. So risk is the probability of reaching the potential level of damage in the condition of use or exposure to a certain factor or agent or their combination. So if you look on the right of the slide, you can see a shark. So uh, a shark is a danger, dangerous animal, dangerous fish. But if we have a, uh, a shark in a pool 
with, with, with the, the shark that, uh, that is uh, swims alone, we have no risk because we have we have no uh, we don't have uh, an exposure because the shark is alone. But of course, uh, if we have uh, a, a, a man, a person that are swimming in the same pool of shark, of course, uh, we have hazard combined with an exposure. And so in this case, uh, we, have, we have a risk. Um, it's, to it's evaluate, great, sorry? It's a great example, Fabiana. And uh, I think this, this example is show visually what's the difference and uh, also uh, Elisabetta, you made the example with the alcohol. I think also uh, that's very uh, clear, too easy to understand. And in this uh, matter, uh, Fabiana, I wanted to ask you one thing, because uh, sometimes we need to uh, differentiate the chemicals that are dangerous because it goes into the final product and the chemical uh, debris in the tannery, so that they are on the tannery can be dangerous for the, uh, for the workers, basically. How do you uh, differentiate these two? Okay, um, we can we can consider that uh, um, nothing uh, is uh, created, nothing nothing can be destroyed, but all can be transformed. And so, um, as Lavoisier said <laughs> many many years ago. Um, and so if we uh, use, uh, we purchase uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the facility, in the tannery chemicals, these chemicals uh, uh, come into uh, processes, uh, into products, into leather, or comes into wastewater, into solid waste, into air uh, emissions. So uh, everything we, uh, we put inside uh, in, in, in a tannery uh, move to, uh, to, to, to an allocation, to, uh, to a, a compact, to, a, to a, a, another place. And so um, we have to uh, manage the uh, risk the risks associated to um, to handling or to use uh, of uh, of chemicals, and of course, uh, uh, when we are using chemicals in the processes or because we move storages and so on, the safety and the health also of workers is very important. And this is the reason why when we um, when we do. The risk assessment, uh, uh, the uh, one of the priority uh, is uh, the uh, is uh, um, are sorry health and safety of uh, uh, of workers. For example, in uh, in the tanneries, uh, uh, there are uh, abatement plants, uh, and also uh, workers use uh, um, personal protection equipment to avoid uh, the exposition. So with PPE, we um, reduce uh, the value of exposition, and so we reduce uh, the risk. We also can reduce the risk, reducing uh, the hazard, so the danger uh, uh, associated with chemicals. And so in, in a tunnel, we can, uh, um, we, we can abate uh, uh, the, the, the risk uh, associated to chemical substance, also reducing hazard, uh, the, uh, the presence of hazardous chemicals on or, or end. Uh, also, um, a bit uh, the uh, exposition. But it's important also to uh, underline what uh, are hazardous chemicals and uh, or why. Some chemicals are uh, hazardous, and so uh, which are uh, the uh, which is the classification uh, based on which we can consider one substance or one chemical product dangerous or uh, or not. Um, in particularly uh, when we uh, talk about safety in uh, in a tannery. Uh, we also talk about, of course, uh, flammable products, uh, uh, 
or uh, uh, corrosive uh, uh, products. But uh, if we come into deep uh, on which products uh, can remain on leather, for example, and can uh, uh, can generate a, a problem on the uh, product safety, we uh, considering we uh, we consider other um, other classifications uh, categories like. Uh, uh, Persist like substances that are uh, uh, a risk, uh, a risk for the environment. For example, persistent by a by accumulative and toxic uh, uh, substances for the environment, or very persistent and very by accumulative uh, substances, or uh, the so-called CMR substances uh, that are carcinogenic and mutagenic and toxic for uh, reproduction. Another uh, incoming uh, risk, uh, very important risk uh, uh, category is the, the endocrine uh, disruptor um, or other substances that can be um, the same effect on, uh, uh, that can be affect also the health of workers and, uh, and consumers. In this slide, we um, we have summarized uh, um, what we are talking uh, uh, before. So chemicals uh, um, arrive into the tannery. So uh, chemicals are used in plants uh, and are present in uh, and storages. And uh, after the uses, uh, uh, these uh, chemicals can move, uh, can remain or into uh, the leather or can move into the solid waste, the air emission, wastewater, and so on. If we focus on the telling process, uh, um, we can also uh, come into deep on some peculiarities uh, of uh, the different phases uh, of uh, telling process, because uh, uh, we, can, uh, um, we can divide uh, telling process into four main phases. Uh, a preliminary, preliminary uh, step, um, thanks to which uh, uh, heights and raw heights and skins uh, uh, are preparing to the following step of tanning, uh, the uh, tanning uh, process, the post tanning uh, phases, uh, and uh, the last uh, uh, the last phase uh, that is finishing. The chemicals involved in these different phases are different, different for qualities and different from also for quantities. In the first phase, um, the chemicals that are used are mainly um, basic chemicals, and so uh, salts, uh, acids, uh, bases, uh, and, and so on. In the telling phase, uh, we uh, can use also uh, basic chemicals uh, like chromium salts, for example, but we can also use uh, um, complex organic molecules uh, like uh, vegetable tannins uh, or uh, like uh, uh, aldehydes uh, or other tanning agents. And uh, if we move uh, also to um, post tanning phases and uh, um, mainly on finishing, uh, the complex, uh, complexity uh, and also the number of organic complex molecules uh, uh, increased a lot. And so we have also uh, a different, uh, di different uh, chemical product, uh, a different also uh, risk assessment in each of, uh, uh, of these phases. Excuse me, Fabiana, I have a yeah. question for you. So we always speak about chromium and everybody around the world is always so concerned about chromium. So we, I was wondering, are the chemicals used in the finishing side of the, of the, in the finishing section of the tannery harmful like or more than chromium? Yes, because uh, um, frequently we, we consider only um, the, the, the chemical uh, uh, impact of the tanning phases, on the tanning phase. But uh, we have to consider, uh, also for, from the environmental point of view, ma 
um, most of all for the uh, product safety uh, aspects, the entire process and the, uh, the number of the substances, the chemical products that are using finishing are a lot of uh, products and absolutely uh, the major part of the products are using in this, uh, in this phase. Uh, in this phase. Uh, it's also important to uh, consider in that uh, um, the, uh, the type of tanning uh, um, determines uh, the, uh, the, the, the chemicals uh, after the tanning, uh, uh, the tanning process. Because uh, if we use uh, uh, the tanning process, uh, a, a tannage that can provide to, uh, to pelt um, a list of uh, performances and uh, properties that we don't need uh, uh, we don't need to um, to use uh, more chemicals uh, in the post tanning phases mainly to add these uh, properties and performances also in the finishing uh, phase if we use uh, a, a tannage that uh, um, cannot uh, give to pelt uh, some uh, performances in the tannage phase we need to have uh, a good properties or some properties uh, at the finish ladder uh, in finish ladder to add more um, more chemicals that that can provide these uh, uh, these performances in the uh, following phase and so it, it's a sort of uh, equilibrium that we have to uh, consider when we uh, when we talk about uh, uh, Tanning process, but uh, considering the uh, the entire uh, the entire production and the yeah. entire Later, we go also more in deep all the different type of uh, tanning, uh, Fabiana, and specifically uh, to see the plus and minus of all of them. But uh, because we start uh, also with uh, chromium, and because chromium is the most popular. Uh, element most tanning uh, popular tanning agents in leather. I want to ask to our special uh, uh, guest, uh, um, Professor uh, Masi, uh, what about the allergy? Is it true that chrome causes uh, allergies? And if yes, in, in which level can cause allergy to people? Okay, uh, there are a, a, a lot of data uh, from the dermatologist. Uh, I can uh, refer, for example, to a uh, recent paper of Professor Moretto, that is an allergologist uh, and dermatologist uh, of the University of Milan, and uh, that he was studying really uh, the, mm, a very large campaign to test the, the, the allergic property of uh, uh, chromium uh, tendon leather, and practically for people that are not uh, particularly uh, subject to any allergy by their nature, you don't have uh, any, uh, any uh, allergenic uh, effect. And uh, that is uh, uh, really important to say because uh, in many cases, uh, the allergy is related to the release of the chrome. Now, the standard uh, use of the leather is uh, uh, in condition where chromium is very well chemically linked to the structure of the leather, to the structure of the hide. So it's really uh, very difficult to have the possibility that chromium escape from the leather because the mobility of chromium is at pH that are significantly lower than three. So at that point, uh, I'm not worried about uh, the release of chromium, but I'm worried about the contact with the acidity. It's something like to make the hand into a hydrochloric acid. I'm not worried for the uh, part per million of chromium, I'm warning because I'm uh, corroded by the, uh, by the acidity. And uh, so that, uh, uh, is uh, give me the possibility to say that uh, in many cases in the literature, there are reported data obtained uh, about the re release of chromium in conditions that are very far from
from the condition that are uh, possible in the everyday use of the letter by the customer. Because uh, you can consider that uh, you have a significant release if you are uh, immerged in a very acid water for three days, who is the person that is keeping uh, wet shoes for three days, for example, and in the right acidity? Because even if you consider the acidity of your sweet, you are in the pH that is in the range of 5, 5.5. That is a pH where the chromium doesn't uh, uh, release from the lead because you need to go uh, to move away the chromium in, 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 in some, uh, in, in a very simple, you need to have the pH that you are having during the tanning, where you are inserting the chromium. So it's, it's a condition that is not uh, uh, feasible for the, <laughs> for, the, for the life of the leather uh, used by the, the final cost. Professor, sorry for interrupting you, yeah. but you know, in our experience, one question that everyone is asking us, it's everybody's afraid of about chromium is the chromium six. Can yes. you tell us the chromium six? So can you tell us a little bit more about this and how we can? Oh, 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 okay, Cro chromium three and chromium six. Uh, uh, people are afraid of chromium-6 because it was the oldest way to tan the leather, but uh, there are nearby 200 years that we are no longer using uh, the chromium-6. Uh, the chromium six. Uh, why is present some chromium-3? Uh, because probably someone is using a salt that is not chromium-6 uh, free, and uh, if you are respecting the rule, uh, your chromium is uh, uh, always, uh, uh, your uh, uh, chromium sulfate that you are, this is the salt that we are using for the tanning is uh, usually we, well below one part per million the content of chromium six. It uh, can be controlled by the process of production of the chromium salt. And uh, which are the condition uh, where you can have the oxidation. Usually there are hot condition, so a temperature above the 80 degrees centigrade, and usually alkaline condition, and uh, the presence of oxygen. So it means uh, in condition, high temperature, high presence of oxygen, and alkaline media, you can have the oxidation, the oxidation of chromium-3 to chromium-4, to chromium-6, and that is the, the classical problem that we have, for example, in, in some methods that we are using in the analysis. So today, many of the criticalities of the appearance of chromium-6 are related to a certain um, uh, imprecisions that you have in the analytical methods. And that is where all the chemists today are working, because uh, when you have the limits, that is 3 ppm of chromium-6 in the leather, and now you are facing from here to five years uh, to 1 ppm, and you need to have a very reliable uh, meth chemical methods to measure chromium-6. Because in many cases, chromium-6 is generated during the analytical method. This was very interesting and very enlightening for all of us. Thank you, Prof. And if I can say something to, to the consideration of Fabiana about the risk, we are facing exactly the same condition that we had today from the pandemic. So uh, one part is given of the risk is given by the contact, so the probability of contact, so that is related to the density of people. And so if you want to reduce the, the risk of contagious, you need to have a distance from the people. But because it's an area, contamination in aerial contact, uh, you can uh, reduce the risk, for example, making a barrier that is the surgical mask or the FFP2, or to have a very nice um, conditioning of, of the air. So make a filtration, and that is what we have, for example, 
in the tunnels where to preserve the uh, to protect uh, the workers workers must uh, wear the uh, the dpis more we have the conditioning of the the filtration of air in order to reduce the probability of contact of the worker with the hazardous scan. And actually, because most, uh, if we do not consider the aldehyde process, because the aldehyde process is something that is a, 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 a risk of, or to have, a, a, because the volatile of aldehydes, you have a, a lot of aldehydes that are released also in the atmosphere. So usually, all the process of tannery uh, all the chemicals remain in water. So you have much more a risk of uh, water contamination. So it's a problem of uh, wastewaters than uh, the problem of pollutants in the air. That's great. That's great. Uh, Fabiana, uh, maybe we can uh, go ahead. I think that the, the next part will be very, very interesting. I mean, this topic of Professor Masi is also very uh, highlighting of the testing uh, mm -hmm. uh, how we test because there's always a debate between the brand and the tanneries of why the test is failing now and not failing uh, tomorrow. Uh, I think <laughs> if we start to talk, uh, discuss about this, uh, we may spend the next one and a half hour. Oh, no, no, next no. One, I think next it... one year, next year. No, no, no. <laughs> but the solution is, is simple. Let's together invest in order to develop a very reliable uh, yes. method. Right. All together, because we want to have a measure. So it's like to invent a new game, the, uh, all the player, so it's the deed or gift that they, we have in the America's Cup. So <laughs> the, the, the challenger and, and the, the defender sit together and they define the rules. This is, will be a, a great solution. And uh, Fabiana, we need the UNICH and uh, to really work towards this. And, and uh, also professor, we need really to put the effort together of, of the association, the sustainability association, the leather association, and the brands to go forward the standard because the wise is a battle that nobody will ever win. Yes, but this is, uh, uh, this is why also uh, Elisabetta is uh, hardly uh, <laughs> probably working on the uh, SEN, ISO, uh, and ISO commissions, uh, because uh, uh, the problem to uh, guarantee uh, reliability of, uh, of results uh, is uh, exactly uh, methods. If we have not uh, a method that can guarantee a, a, a specific requirement, uh, we cannot, uh, for example, put uh, these uh, lower uh, requirements in our RSL. If the, um, the quantification limit of uh, uh, the chromium standard is uh, uh, 3 ppm, we cannot uh, guarantee uh, reliability at 1 pm. Because, uh, uh, not because uh, it's not possible to, uh, to process leather in order to, uh, to have uh, uh, one ppm instead of three, but because uh, with the uh, the actual method, three ppm uh, is absent. At the p three ppm, uh, chromium six uh, is absent because uh, the method cannot uh, uh, see. Go below. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Uh, go below. But on uh, this topic of uh, methods, uh, also uh, Elisabetta uh, will come into deep. Uh, after uh, uh, afterward uh, the uh, the present. Yes, we, we look forward for that because I think that's very hot uh, hot topic for the. Oh, and, and also <laughs> thank you for leaving me with with a <laughs> hot topic. <laughs> no, when you uh, improve the method, uh, if you consider today we have uh, a, a method that is rather simple. We discover that can be uh, have a lot of interference. So we are trying to correct the interference, but uh, uh, this correction is facing uh, some uncertainties. So probably we need to improve the quality of the method. So uh, if you want to have a very reliable uh, 
uh, assessment in the case where you have some DAP is uh, in or is out, uh, probably go through to some uh, instrumental, very sophisticated methods that are able to give a number. But uh, it's not the every day because it's costly. You cannot go the routine, but every time you are near by the border, you can go to a very sophisticated method. But the very sophisticated method is not only the instrument. It's taking care of how you are making the sample, because for example, uh, because the leather is not always of the same thickness, uh, when you are doing the tanning, the amount of uh, chromium uh, tree that you are uh, let penetrate and then chemically uh, fix it to the leather is different depending by the position of, 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 the, of, of the leather because of, of the shape of the animal. And because that, uh, even uh, if you have uh, some chromium six that is uh, originally bring as impurity uh, of the chromium uh, three salt, uh, uh, it is obviously, if you are making the sample in the position where probably there is more leather and it is probably more chromium, you can find there more chromium six. While if you are uh, making the measure in another place of the leather, you can find that you are perfectly within the limits. So that is uh, the variability of the, uh, of the thing. So, no, but that's that's very complicated uh, matter yes. for sure. It's not it's not easy, and and I see also some questions are coming more about the different type of uh, tanning, and also if there will be a shift. Uh, uh, let's say that the biggest problem is uh, uh, pricing uh, right now, uh, and if there will be a shift to a different type of tanning without uh, without chrome, maybe also because of this complexity. Com Club complexity, sorry. Okay. But Fabiana, that, that's maybe a topic we can look more uh, in deep, uh, if we can, uh, to look more the difference uh, between of the uh, environmental impact of different uh, tanning. Okay, okay, we can move on the final yes, part the presentation. of the uh, presentation. Sorry to cut uh, this. No, part don't worry. Uh, we, we can, uh, if uh, we have time uh, after, we can move. Uh, Ah, okay. Well, uh, th this is the, the, first, the first part to be considered well, when uh, uh, we, we compare uh, chromium uh, tanning versus metal-free or chromium-free tanning. Well, um, if you uh, rem uh, remember what uh, Fabiana had said about, uh, uh, about risk and hazard and, and risk, uh, these are the, the properties of various chemicals that are used uh, during the tanning, only the tanning phase. Uh, forget the, the first part and the second part, only for tanning, only, only, uh, for tanning phase. Um, you can see that uh, uh, chromium have, has some uh, uh, problems related to environment, uh, to safety of workers or uh, use in, in general, but uh, alternatives like uh, glutaraldehyde, uh, TPHAs, uh, titanium are even worse. And uh, you should take into account also that uh, different tanning, pro tanning, so tanning phase lead, <coughs> leads to um, different chemicals that are that are used during the following processes. So uh, you can't only take into consideration the tanning phase, but you have to consider the whole process. And sorry, that's sorry, why we... no, just, just one clarification. Yes. When you say glutaraldehyde and TPHS, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an expert. Uh, no, no, okay. Maybe okay. The people does not is what we say. Okay, home free. Uh, you're right, sorry. Sorry, vegetable uh, tannins are uh, uh, chemicals, tannins, uh, that come from uh, uh, vegetables, from, uh, from trees, for part Okay, uh, actually, trees. in most cases, are, are from uh, direct uh, chemical synthesis, not from direct from the trees. <laughs> really? So, well, yes, yeah, but, so but, you, but, uh, 
they they come from the trees. Vegetable no, they is... come from the trees that uh, you have. Uh, okay, the original molecule that probably is from the keys, but now in many cases it's more economical to do the organic synthesis. Ah, thank you very much. <laughs> Four. So, there are, there are two, um, so it's vague, but uh, no, it's not, 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 not a it's synthetic not carrot. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, not all. There are uh, also vegetable tannins that are uh, simply extracted by, 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 by nature, yeah. By things, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, TPHAs, phosphodium salts, are uh, metal free and glutaraldehyde uh, is an aldehyde, so it's an organic compound um, but has uh, its problems, as you can see, because it, it's really uh, dangerous for, for health and uh, for uh, phosphonium salts uh, as well. And if we consider um, the environment, environmental impacts of uh, the, the three possible uh, tanning processes. We can see in the in the picture on on, uh, on the right that each one has some good performance in uh, um, in specific uh, environmental parts, such as for example, um, vegetal tanning has low water consumption, especially uh, for soles. Uh, leather for souls uh, has a small amount, uh, of small, a smaller amount uh, of water used because uh, they um, they use tips and the same water with the, a certain uh, amount of tannin at, at, at several different uh, uh, concentration, so the, the water use is reduced. While for for example uh, the aldehydes uh, uh, tanning use uh, a worse uh, amount of, uh, of water. And, and, and you can say this is the best. This is the, 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 the best solution, uh, at, at least up to now, um, that, that, you can, that you can find to solve all the problems. You possibly, possibly move the problem for, from one compartment of, of the environment to another one. So you have to consider all the, the environmental aspects. Only talking about environmental aspects, only that. And we have tried to, um, to list pros and cons uh, of, uh, various, of the various tanning uh, possibilities. Well, first of all, chromium is the most known process of, uh, of tanning. And all the research that, that uh, uh, has been made has been made to produce uh, dyes, uh, uh, fat liquors, uh, finishing products that are uh, more applicable to chromium tanned leather. And this is from centuries. Centuries, one century more, more or less. Metal free is rather is rather recent. Okay. Thank Sorry you. to interrupt you because we get actually in the chat some uh, very interesting question from Balai Velu. Uh, how does the uh, ZDHC uh, MRSL classify the TPHS and the glutaraldehyde tanning chemicals? How the ZDHC? The I, I well, uh, by heart, I, actually, I don't remember. I, I I need to check a bit because there is a huge list of substances. And uh, I, I, well, uh, okay. sorry, okay. I will I will well, ask I thing. will ask later uh, if uh, if the um, if they leave me um, an email, I will uh, I, I will yeah. reply. But I, I prefer to check because I I, I, don't, I don't remember. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. If I can add uh, some some information, uh, if I, I remember well, uh, uh, now um, there are uh, no uh, either TP, um, HC, or uh, um, or glutaraldehyde in the uh, release 2.0 of MRSS. Yes. I don't uh, think so, but, but probably yes, uh, um, because uh, the the last release uh, doesn't take into uh, into consideration 
uh, desensitizing uh, uh, properties of some uh, uh, of some uh, substances. Um, probably because uh, uh, there are a, a proposal of restriction at uh, uh, European level of uh, sensitizing, probably when the uh, restrict, uh, restriction proposal um we come into uh we come in uh, in force uh, uh, probably uh, the the the, the new, rele uh, new release of uh, the that the hc uh, mrsl will be uh, will be published but uh, at the moment i think that uh, there are uh, there is no uh and no uh, surely not no uh no but also because uh, uh, this type of, uh, um, of tanning is not uh, uh, so frequently used also because uh, uh, it uh, has a uh, um, serious problem uh, uh, for uh, uh, workers' uh, safety. Because it does not have problem for the workers' safety or it does? Uh, it does. It does. It does. It does. Oh, sorry, it does. And there is also another problem uh, because uh, when you have uh, a production that is not uh, 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 only done by a single company that uh, it has its own uh, water treatment plant, but uh, you are living in an environment like uh, uh, one in Veneto and the other in Tuscany or the other one in, uh, in Campania where you have... Uh, uh, many companies that have the effluent, the water effluent, they convey the water effluent to the same uh, uh, wastewater uh, treatment plant uh, to have uh, a, a wastewater stream that is coming from a Cromontani and a wastewater treatment that is coming uh, uh, from an aldehyde uh, process or uh, uh, sulfonium uh, uh, one, you can have a very big uh, problem uh, into design a very effective water treatment approach. Do you mean, Professor, that the water treatment system is designed more to take, uh, to uh, process the chromium? Yes, today is working from chromium. So it's practically is reducing the the chemical oxygen demand and is going to recover the chromium. So you are recycling back the chromium. And uh, so you get uh, a water that is complained by the law. But uh, that process is no longer working if you have the, a significant amount of aldehydes inside the water. So, so we need to change the entire process if we yes. want to start. Yes, if in some way, there is a political decision that uh, is something like what's happened for car. We decide that car will be electric. I don't think so. It means that no diesels. So it's not possible to have a, a mixed system. Yes, this is something that should be defined. Yes, in particular, <coughs> also, uh, both for the problem of interference and also for uh, because uh, the org uh, microorganism that are living in the wastewater uh, treatment plants that, that are those that that, uh, um, that uh, uses uh, chemicals to, to grow the, their mass need to be adapted to the, the, the substrate. And uh, if they are used to uh, chromium uh, wastewater, they are not used to um, Tannin, uh, synthetic tannins uh, uh, with water, and they don't know how to to feed with this kind of uh, substances. That's why it, uh, they doesn't work. You can mix different types of water, but not only for um, different tanning uh, wastewater, also for different uh, uh, industrial processes. You need to be. Very careful yeah, when you yeah. when you project a plant and when you decide to accept or not accept uh, uh, particular wastewater, that, the particular that's wastewater. Yes, mm -hmm. also Frank because uh, if, I, if I can add uh, one information, uh, Nicola, also because uh, uh, both uh, um, formaldehyde and uh, uh, glutaraldehyde 
are uh, biocytes, have uh, biocytes uh, properties, and so uh, they can affect uh, they kill the microorganisms, microorganisms, they kill the but they are not uh, uh, so strong to uh, resist them. Yeah, we are, going, we are going very, very specific and in depth here. But uh, yes. I see all your passion on, on the chemistry side of the... Uh, and, uh, but I will... I think this, well, yeah. I have worked for 10 years on, on wastewater treatment plants. So. Wow. We, we can talk about that in 10 years, maybe. But, no, but I think this presentation is the uh, a page, uh, uh, Elisabetta, that, uh, yes. that I interrupt you. I'm sorry, that was my, uh, my fault. It's very interesting to see all the difference uh, uh, of the different timing that the plus and yes. the minus. So. Yes, the, the final, the final uh, consideration is that you, you need to take to, to take into account several things when you want to project an article, because it's, it's not so easy. There, there are possible articles that you can uh, you can produce both with uh, chromium tanning and with uh, metal-free tanning, but uh, it's it's also possible that, that you can't produce some some articles with uh, metal-free and for sure also with uh, vegetal leather um, uh, tanning. If you want uh, a good uh, light fastness resistance, if you don't want the, the color change during the time, you you don't have to use a vegetal uh -huh. leather because because color is ah buongiorno is, senta la posso eh, richiamare Fabi um, because it's uh, uh, it's an intrinsic property of uh, vegetal tanned leather the fact that it changes colors during the year and uh, uh, from from our point of view from my point of view it, it gets nicer and, and nicer uh, when well, the time is, is going on. And uh, the look is very, is very natural, uh, but if you want something that doesn't change color or uh, if it's raining, uh, doesn't have spots after uh, it, it, it is exposed to, uh, to rain, this is impossible because uh, uh, of course it, it, it's impossible. It depends. Yeah on what you want to, to produce, the article that, that you want. What, and what you're saying, Elisabetta, is that you always need to find your balance, no? That yes, you, you cannot exactly, have exactly, it exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and to, th there is a possibility to, to have this more or less the same article, both, uh, okay, let's go to the next topic, okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Tell me what you want to, to discuss about, <laughs> and I'm ready. I'm ready to. Well, um, we we have listed some aspects of the possible tanning processes, but the, of course there are there are more. Yeah, but I think it will be very interesting to have this overview and also the the graph you show us before with the diamond where we yes. see. Uh, uh, which kind of uh, tanning is impacting yes. different way the environment. I yep. think that picture is something that can give yes. to the, exactly, to the uh, final, uh, from tannery yes. to the to the brands and the final customer, a clear picture of what is the reality and based on, on data and, and on the on, on facts. And, yeah. uh, and I see also one question here that it replies, uh, I think we already replies uh, from Jeremy, uh, popular, shall we understand that uh, sustainable leather is that inappropriate term? No, that's not true. Uh, it depends on on uh, on what you uh, you mean um, for sustainable, because uh, um, of course you can reduce your impact, uh, you can manage them. You can avoid to uh, you, you can protect your workers with with uh, uh, the application of legislation, uh, DPIs, and uh, what 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 is needed. You can improve your um, um, your performance uh, in uh, in projecting uh, uh, new uh, new articles, uh, new leather. And please don't forget that uh, uh, leather is, ca comes from a renewable 
source. Yes, it's not the plating is not the plating anything, it, it, uh, it, and it's byproduct. It's it's not something that is. Please, Maurizio, sorry. No, 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 no. It's really something because uh, when uh, I, I'm uh, walking uh, during the, the, the shop uh, streets and I say, Eco Pelle, Eco Pelle is ah! that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ah! true because the only uh, is really the, the natural one that is using uh, a product that uh, we, we are. Uh, uh, could say uh, growing up uh, the cows for eating uh, the meat, and then uh, uh, we are going to use uh, the, a, a byproduct, the leather, to, to produce very time lasting products. So the quality of the leather is really fantastic because uh, a simple example, uh, my uh, wife was having as a heritage uh, uh, some uh, bags that is coming from his grandmother. Yeah. <laughs> Very spectacular leathers that probably today are not possible, but uh, it's something that they have more of a century and they have only a little bit of rust in the metals. So it's something that is uh, not uh, oh, no. uh, very easy to be obtained. And also uh, we are uh, in a complex society. We want to have a complex products. So which is the possible uh, more environmental solution for, for example, the, the, the shoes cannot be the same environmental solution, nice environmental solution to produce the leather for a jacket or the leather for a bag. Mm -hmm. And that is completely uh, different. So each product should be the same. And uh, what you can uh, uh, do to help the customer to give uh, something like a certificate. If you want to have this product about touch, about uh, uh, water repellent, or whatever you want, transpirability, that is probably the best solution. So my project, my process of production is the best one because I was minimizing all those aspects. And if you are changing the recipe, it is not uh, guaranteed that you get uh, the same uh, properties for the customer. Well, um, anyway, on, uh, on, oh, sorry. Yeah, this is a great, I mean, it's, um, it, it's the reality that we have to consider everything, but I think this slide uh, that we have right now is also very interesting for the brands. Uh, I don't know if Elisabetta or, or Fabiana want to comment it because it's always difficult yes. for a brand to understand, uh, especially for a big brand where you have, uh, I don't know, a restricted subset list of, I don't know, thousands of, of chemicals. <laughs> what do I have to test? And also, <laughs> and also, Nicola, it's always very expensive to test everything, as we <laughs> all know very well. Do we need well, to test every lot? Well, um, well this is, uh, the, this document is a specification uh, that is um, an, a unit document uh, um, that uh, uh, we uh, we thought about uh, when uh, the, the discussion about uh, chemical restrictions uh, started, and that is around two, 2001, 2002, the first the first edition, and uh, uh, we um, we wrote that that. Uh, um, in order to help our tunnels in understanding which is uh, required by legislation and which is required by uh, by the brand, because uh, uh, often uh, the, these two things are um, are different. Um, and also, and, and it is updated every time there is uh, um, a modification in the in the, in the national or European leg legislation, even if uh, we refer also to the main international legislation that uh, that uh, um, include uh, the same substances or different substances in uh, uh, in their restrictions. 
Uh, this one uh, instead is uh, the result of the, the picture on the right uh, on the right side is uh, um, the report of uh, um, a survey we made on wastewater raw wastewater um, in order to check if uh, uh, the GFC substances were uh, present. Um, well, uh, the GFC substances are uh, under limits also um, by, uh, by um, national and international legislation, but uh, we were uh, curious to understand if uh, they were present or not in the um, in the wastewater, so they were used. And uh, we realized that, uh, uh, well, I thought that the result uh, would have been worse than uh, what uh, actually we have found, because uh, if there are positive results, uh, actually they are very near to the detection limit. So traces and not huge amounts. So th that means that with some better manage of uh, management of the, of the of the chemicals the the problems can be solved very in a very quick uh, very quick time very short time sorry okay very no that's great time. so we the, the 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 status of our water is better than 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 uh, than i thought yes <laughs> thought. That, that's a really great news uh, elizabeth yes it is <laughs> but let's say for the brand if if let's say we go back to the material now you yes. want we a brand want to test the material on a specific uh, uh, risky yeah. substance. Is there somewhere where uh, the brand can find this uh, risk assessment? I don't know, from UNICH, from Leatherworking Group, from, I don't know, a uh, European uh, 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 direction guideline? Well, um, um, we, well, we, um, we write this, um, this document every year or twice a year, and this is, is, a, is a help. Uh, what uh, uh, we uh, are doing at um, normative level, we have a, we have a, a standard. I don't remember the number, but I, I, I can uh, I can give you later um, about what uh, we can't find in uh, in leather, the substances that you that are restricted, but that can be found in leather because they are not used. Mm. And uh, the, the, what we, we say, what we, uh, we, we, can, we can propose to our clients, to our partners, is to make a risk assessment about where and why these substances can be found in the leather. So the amount, of the chemicals they use, the uh, the, um, the suppliers, is if the suppliers is, are reliable or not, uh, if they if they use um, semi-terminate uh, um, pro semi-processed leather, uh, check from where they come and if they are if the. Um, uh, they if they are rel reliable or not, depending, dep well, if they, they come from uh, Europe where certain substances can't be anymore used, uh, they are rather certain that these substances would, won't uh, well, uh, be found in the leather. If they come from uh, outside Europe, maybe it's better if you test something when these. Um, so uh, the, the, the risk yes. assessment basically needs to be done exactly. from the brand. Uh, depending on where oh, yes. they source the, the material. Exactly. If you source in United States, if you source in Italy, if you source in China, there are three <laughs> different uh, parameters and yes. that there may be different chemicals that they are used because they yes. are allowed or, or not. If and, they are not anymore allowed, you, it's impossible yeah. to find them. Exactly, so, exactly. So in the chat room and the Q&A section, there's a lot of interest and this is maybe for Professor Mazi and uh, about chromium. Can is can chromium be can 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 calcinogen? Yeah, and okay. uh, what are the point of evaluation? There is a lot of question around this. Yes, and uh, it looks like chrome. It's always a very and the most interesting, <laughs> the most interesting question that people ask. 
Okay, okay. Like... No, 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 no. Uh, 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 to I I Irene, uh, uh, yes, I was already uh, making an answer by uh, uh, written, but uh, it's really important because uh, chromium-6 is really a dangerous uh, chemical. Eh? And, but we have to consider that uh, we are not using chromium-6, we are using chromium-3, that is not a toxic metal. And uh, also, uh, which are uh, the problem in the presence of heavy amount of chromium. So there are no limitations uh, when you are discarding, uh, for example, a chromium pulp that you can, a, a leather pulp that you can get uh, from uh, digestion uh, of the waste uh, uh, leather. And uh, there are no limitations about the overall amount of chromium. There are limitations from the lead, there are limitations from the cadmium, there are limitations from many metals, but there are no limitations about the chromium-3. That is the natural amount of chromium. Remember that uh, our vegetables, if you are sending the chromium on, on, on the ground, they are uh, able to get only the chromium that they need uh, because the, the radixes are able to suck only the right amount of chromium. So you can have uh, uh, the level of... Uh, mm, and then also it, it precipitates in the natural pH uh, of, of, of the soil. But uh, it's not the, the real fate. Now, you, if you are going to make uh, a digested pulp, you can have, uh, for example, process that, can, that are able to remove the chromium because chromium is a costly uh, chemicals and we want to recover, not to, to send uh, uh, away in the landfill. And uh, there is another question that uh, I think is very relevant, the one by E.B. Stockdale, that is uh, related to the safety of the work. I think uh, we can do everything, but uh, uh, we can do nothing without safety. So, uh, our work should be protected with uh, DPI and we must use the condition where uh, everything is done in a safe manner. And all the rule of working, uh, now the risk, uh, assess the risk assessment during the, 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 the working operation now try to have uh, the, 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 the right operation. So you must wear gloves, uh, you must wear a mask, uh, you must have a ventilation uh, system into the, in, 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 your, uh, in your company. So there are really a lot of, uh, yes. a lot of measures that uh, try to avoid uh, the, con the, the contamination of the work. Yeah, what, one, last, uh, one last question, and then I think we close because the people are start, start to be uh, <laughs> fed up. <laughs> but uh, no, but uh, I think, uh, <clears throat> sorry, this is a very important point, Professor. Hmm. Chrome 6 forbidden and is very dangerous. Chrome 3 is, 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 is a component of our environment where we live yes. and, and we need to use in the, in the right way. Uh, the, the last question is, how can we uh, make sure that Chrome 3 doesn't uh, become Chrome 6? For example, some people may say, uh, is a leather working group certifying tannery more uh, hardly to get a Chrome 6? How can we try to limit our risk to uh, get these, uh, uh, I don't know, do you say moving? Uh, actually, if you had the risk, uh, uh, probably is uh, uh, more than during the tannery. You had the risk in some post processing. If you have an alkaline, uh, hot temperature alkaline uh, condition, uh, heavy alkaline condition, you can have uh, the, the problem of uh, oxidation chrome 3 to chrome 6. But the new standard process try to avoid the condition. So the, the, the risk is some, in more cases, a memory of the past. Uh, is not looking to what, yeah, what are the condition of today. And uh, there are also, if I can, uh, can I add, uh, um, 
one point, there are also uh, best practices uh, that uh, yes. uh, tanneries can uh, put in place uh, in order to avoid uh, uh, the, uh, the conditions that can transform, uh, as uh, Professor Masi uh, said before, uh, um, the oxidation of uh, chromium-3 into chromium-6. Uh, um, there are uh, best practices that that tannery can uh, con consider in uh, different uh, process uh, process phases, uh, not only in tanning uh, but also in uh, uh, post tanning. For example, uh, uh, avoid the use of uh, some uh, um, fat. I don't remember the, 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 the English terms of ingrasso. Uh, fat liquor. Fat liquor. Fat liquor. Fat liquor. Fat liquor. Thank you so much. Uh, for example, avoiding uh, the insature uh, uh, fat liquors uh, or, uh, uh, for example, add uh, a, little, a little quantity of uh, uh, vegetable tannins uh, uh, in order to maintain uh, a lower pH uh, of. Uh, um, of, uh, of leather. And uh, as a brand, Fabiana, just, just to uh, uh, resume, as a brand, let's say, how can I find that best practices uh, uh, in the leather industry to reduce my risk? Is there a way, is there a tool, is there something I can uh, apply to my sourcing strategy, for instance, to avoid this? Okay, we we have uh, um, collect, uh, yes, we have collected these uh, best practices uh, in a uh, in a working group uh, that we uh, had with the uh, Italian Chemical uh, Association uh, that is uh, Federchimica. Uh, actually, we have these uh, best practices uh, uh, in Italian. I don't know, Elisabetta, if we have. Yes, all... I think there are there are also in in English. Ah, okay. We I think can, so. Let uh... me check. Let me check. Okay, we, we, <laughs> we can check, uh, and if you are interested in, in interesting on, we can share this uh, best. Yeah, that uh, that I think will be great if you can uh, if you can uh, share this with the audience, and uh, we saw also some question about sharing. Uh, the decks and some of the graphic was very interesting. Uh, I think the video will be also in YouTube, so you can you can have a look later on. But uh, I think this uh, graphic is very important to share. And uh, with this, uh, I, I, Nico, we thank all our audience, eh? Elisabetta, uh, Fabiana, especially. Thank you, everybody. It was fun even well. today. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. We just Bye. announced Bye. last. We just announced oh, the sorry. next, last the next, slide, next yeah. webinar. Sorry, uh, sorry. It will be on sustainable management of raw okay. material, yeah. traceability, mm -hmm. animal welfare, and the key ethical issues. So bear with us. Next week we'll be there. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank bye. you very much. Bye bye.